Hi everyone, Anmar here from Anmar's 3D with another tutorial series. In this series, we'll be covering character modeling concepts and workflows in Maya. The concepts covered in this series can be applied to games, film, TV, and all other 3D digital mediums. We will cover how to prepare the character model for animation while understanding the importance of topology and edge flow. By completing this series, you'll learn how to work from reference, understand animation and facial topology, and keep a clean and organized Maya scene. Finally, we'll cover common modeling techniques like polygon modeling, edge modeling, and use sculpting tools. Even though we'll be using Maya-specific tools like the Modeling Toolkit, the concepts and workflows learned here can be applied to your own CG characters in any software. All right, so before we get started, I just wanted to give a quick introduction and background to my skills and experience. My name is Anwar Mohammed. I've been working in the CG and real-time 3D industry for about 10 years now using Maya, 3ds Max, V-Ray, Unreal Engine, Unity, you know, all the good and really awesome tools out there. So what I've been doing lately is just kind of taking all of my experience and really putting it online out there for, for people to learn. So you can see here again, more samples, a lot of automotive, a lot of CG rendering, graphics, and also as an instructor, I do a lot of kind of more creative, organic uh, lifestyle. So clearly we're about to go ahead and start the process of modeling this hammer boy. And you can get always up to date uh, content and information right here on my YouTube channel. So just on Mars 3D, you can see that I've just started and you know, relatively recent, I'd say this past year. So uh, any support is always appreciated. A quick like and subscribe. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and jump right into Maya. So let's go ahead and jump into a clean scene of Maya and do some project setup. So the first thing that I want to do is set the project. Whenever starting a new project, however big or small, just go ahead and make sure to set your project. So to do that, go to file, set project, and then you're going to navigate to the working folder. Here you can see that I have my Maya modeling folder already set up and I'm just going to set this here. Now I've already created it and it has created a workspace file. Uh, workspace.mel. If you don't have that, it'll create one for you. So just go ahead and set. And actually, I'll just maybe delete this so you can see the steps here, right? So this is the folder here. I'll delete that and then I'll create it in this folder that I just brought up. This is my modeling. See? So now it's going to say create default workspace, select another no location. Nope, let's just create default workspace and now we're ready to go. So if I go ahead now and open scene, you can see that all of my scene files are here as well as my source images. So I'm gonna hit now hit spacebar. So I can jump to my four panel view. Now I wanna go to the, the front view, let's start there and hit the view panel in, in the menus. So if I go down to image plane import image, I can now set up my reference. So I have this reference here, which is character uh, ref main, hit open, and then there it goes. It goes ahead and just puts it right into the front viewport. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing now in the side view. So I go to view and image plane, import image, and I'm gonna grab character ref main. All right, great. So depending on how you prepared this, maybe you broke this up in to multiple images and, and whatnot. All that doesn't matter. You can just put the proper image and you can see that it's showing up here in the viewport. So now if I go back to my perspective view, just by hitting spacebar, again, I'm hitting spacebar to jump in between these, you can see uh, what we have here. Now, I'm gonna just grab the front image here and move this back in the in the X and I'm going to grab my side view image here and I'm going to move this in the Z. So now I th this won't get in the way. All right. The next thing I want to do is just a quick background on some reference that was used to create this. As you can see, you always want to be referring to reference, right? Now, if you're creating a full adult male, if you're creating a, a child or adolescent model, you definitely want to be referring to uh, anatomy for sculptors. 
I, I would definitely support them. Their, their content and books are really priceless and are fantastic for 3D artists and digital artists uh, in the current times. You can, of course, go to the HPC, which is a human proportion calculator. And if you click here, and this was used to kind of create the concept that we have here. So I'll go ahead and close that. You can change this to male or female, and it'll show you the different proportions. And if I change this back to male, and if I hit this three dot here, you can see that you can change it to maybe a child or teenager, which just really helps, right? Now one HU, what is that? That's one head unit. So you can say, if you want this child to be one head unit, that about half the child's head units will be um, up to here, up to his pelvis, right? So keep that in mind as you're going through. It is a fantastic resource, and they also have a, a good resource here uh, on their art station. So if I click Anatomy for Sculptors, they have a lot, a lot of content here from everything from facial anatomy, uh, which we'll be referencing here shortly, okay? So with that said, now we wanna position this. What I typically like to do is just right out the gate, set my scale. So if I go to Windows, Settings, Preferences, Preferences, you can see that if I go to Settings here, that this is set to centimeters, which is perfectly fine. So I'll hit Save. And what I want to do now is just go to the Create tab, Polygons, and hit Q. And then now that I hit Q, I can hit Control A to go to my Channel Box Editor to switch from uh, Attribute Editor, right? So just jump to this Channel Box Editor, and we're going to type in a height of 113, which is 113 centimeters, and just give this a little bit of width, so 20 by 20, all right? So this size, about 113 centimeters, give or take, is the size of a young boy, which is what I want to scale my reference images to. So I will grab image plane here from the front. I'll go ahead and name it appropriately. So I'll do underscore front. Oops. I'll do underscore front. And then I'll grab my side and do underscore side. Great. So now that I have that, let's move to the front view and I'm going to start with just the this base mesh here and I'm going to position this where the middle of my reference is the size of this entire character so I'm just moving and translating right so W to move and R to scale on the keyboard so let's scale this up move it back up and scale it up what I'm going to do now is hit this icon for x-ray uh, or sorry, not x-ray if, if the cube was in front of you, right? So as you can see, I need to move this back in the other direction. So it's now behind the, the cube. So I will go ahead and just continue to position this where this character, this front view is the size of this cube. So move position translate i'm going to go ahead and now turn off the grid since this is kind of getting in the way and we'll just scale it up a little bit more all right almost there something like that that this will be fine right here this is roughly about the size of this 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 child okay so it's about 19.5 maybe just a nice e even number and it now if i go ahead and hit this x-ray icon you can see that i can see in between and i can position this accordingly from the front view great so now i'm going to do the same exact thing with the side view but now i already have some values right so i have to translate y which is how high i move this so i can just copy this value and grab my side view and paste that in translate Y. So that moved it there. And of course, I will set the scale now to 19.5. Perfect. And so I can move this into Z. And this is going to give us the side view. So notice how all I had to do now was just take the translate Y, which moved it up, and then scale it accordingly. And then I can position my side view. All right. Now that I have that, I can, of course, move this back 
so it doesn't get in the way in the perspective view and move this out. And we don't want our viewport to be, you know, too messy. So what we can do is grab this, these three in the outliner. If you don't see your outliner, uh, just hit this icon over here. This is the outliner and hit control G and we can just call this ref underscore GRP, which is just ref group. And what we also want to do is create a layer. So now I can select this group and in the channel box. So again, if you don't see it, you can toggle with control A, add a new layer and you can see we can do ref layer. Great. So now I won't have to go through the pro, you know, issue of accidentally selecting the reference. So I can go ahead now and set this to R. So this will make it a reference layer. So now there, I won't have to worry about accidentally selecting this. Now I am going to take that cube and call it underscore scale for the size of the boy. So that's going to be a very helpful. All right. So now that we have everything set up, we of course can do a control a uh, save and you know, we can call this, uh, you know, my modeling and start there. So now we have everything set up to begin modeling. And now that we set the project, the reference images will always pop up. Okay. Now, before we really just start going through creating more objects and wireframing, I just want to take a quick second to look at some tools that will be very helpful. One tool being GearRef. GearRef is a fantastic resource. It's a free open source tool. And let me show you what it does. So as you can see, if I go to my directory, I have a ton of reference images and sometimes it's not as efficient to, you know, constantly click through and, you know, go through here and, and, you know, double clicking, going through trying to organize it that way. Well, that's where pure ref comes in. So if you install pure ref, you can see what it does. So I'm holding right click on the mouse and I can drag that over to the right. And now I can just start dropping in some of these high, high resolution, high, high detailed images. And we can start building essentially kind of this canvas, right? So I can go in, scroll middle mouse on the wheel, moving middle mouse drag uh, throughout here. So you, you may be looking at some of this uh, reference here. All this reference is, is just to kind of help me plan for what I want to create. So I'll show you with this hammer boy reference with this pure ref I've already created. So I have, of course, my own reference in here. And then now I have some samples of some topology, right? Facial topology, the topology of the body, just some really great references that I spent a little bit of time looking for online that will help me prepare some good stuff um, about some limbs from an anatomy for sculptors and some stylistic renders and shading for when we get to the portion of texturing and shading, right? Some really great art, which I'll be sure to reference uh, who created this art. All right. So again, topology and edge flow is so important. And it's better if you spend some time and actually plan your topology and edge flow. What do I mean? All right, well, let's just jump to Photoshop here real quick. Okay. As so I'm in Photoshop and I have this layer and all this layer is, is just some edge flow that I decided to draw on my character. Maybe I didn't want to go about it this route or I'm doing a couple of iterations, right? So I can create a new layer here and I can grab, you know, maybe this time I'll use some, some red and I have my brush and I'll definitely lower the size of that to about, you know, eh, let's just go five pixels. Okay. So, you know, you can go ahead and start drawing. And I say, you know what, looking at some of this reference here on anatomy for sculptors, you can see how 
the topology of the face works, right? We don't want to just create random edges or create a sphere and go from there. You can see that there's muscles that is going from the eye into the mouth, right? So we can use that as a guide to how we actually want to plan the topology. This is also done for animation. So when characters talk, laugh, smile, their eyes are going to move as their muscles in their mouth are contracting and retracting. And it's going to just give you a lot better, better detail. So again, taking a look, there's just a fantastic breakdowns here, right? And this is not only done for the face, right? This is done for the body, done for the torso. You can see here the different muscle groups. And you don't have to spend a lot of time, you know, learning like the all the different layers and layers right just definitely focus on the the primary and secondary muscle layers and that's a good start right so again this is just going to be a fantastic reference as we move along and it's going to help us build right so again i kind of talked about how the eye is going to have um an orbit of the eye we're going to have the the mouth loop here and then we're going to make sure that we have these edges kind of running from from the mouth right and then of course we have the nose here so we can kind of go here and same thing as we're making our way across so you can see again this is going to help us build some edge phone topology i'm going to refer back to what i had here which is a little bit cleaner but you can get the sense of okay yeah now i have the shoulder area i have the pelvis area and this is the topology that I ended up using for the actual final character here. So if I go ahead and hide the base, you can see that this is the edge flow of the character, right? And I'll, I did that by planning the topology of the character before go, going any further. Okay, so with that last bit, I'll, I'll go ahead and stop the video here. And the next video, we're gonna just start with modeling techniques. Okay, I'll see you there.